In response to the Mike Bickle allegations of inappropriate behavior, what this has now done is caused numerous survivors to come forward and share their own stories, and not necessarily about inappropriate behavior involving interaction with Bickle, although we do know that many have, and we know that many more will, but also former staff and former students of IHOP KC that are coming out now and sharing their own stories about prophetic manipulation and so many other things that leaders put them through. And this is so important because what it is doing is it is bringing attention to IHOP KC as a whole and showing everybody that it is in fact a true cult. Well, we're gonna talk about one former worship leader's story about what happened to her when she told IHOP that she was leaving. Stick with me. We'll be back in just a second with that. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you on the news of the end times and so much more. Thanks for spending part of your day with me today, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. And for someone like me, it's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested in hearing my story about how I went blind and how I operate my entire ministry without being able to see... I made a video that explains it all. I provide a link to that video in the description section of all my videos. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can. Also, if God puts it on your heart to do so, consider making a generous donation to support my ministry here. There's a couple of different ways you could do it. An easy way, just click the super thanks button on the YT video here, where you can make a contribution that way. Or you can become a premium member of Not By Sight News by joining my Patreon today for as little as five bucks a month patreon.com slash not by site news link in the description joining the patreon you get all the videos before they ever hit my main yt platform as i always take care of the patreon members first you also get exclusive links over there to these topics that we discuss uh and you know i got to include a lot of it over on patreon now this is the way things are getting on yt so got to be kind of careful also their comment censorship free on all videos and even semi dms so check it out again it's patreon.com slash not by site news link in the description. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. A former IHOP KC worship leader is now coming out and sharing her story. And, you know, everybody has had a different story to, to share, whether they're a student, a former staffer, whatever it may be. And if you've missed any of the previous videos that I've done on this, you can go back on my channel here and check those out. I encourage you to do so. Uh, but for this one worship leader, you know, she talks about how, you know, she spent, you know, a good six years uh, as part of IHOP KC and was on the worship team. And often she says, you know, I wasn't really approached by many people. I worked like 90 hours a week sometimes for this organization. And a lot of times with, you know, hardly any thanks at all, you know, I would, you know, do my time there and, you know, I would, I would happily serve, but it came to one day where it was time for me to go. She felt that God was calling her elsewhere. And when she gave notice to IHOP KC leaders that she was leaving, all of a sudden she became a priority. Now, this is very important because when you are dealing with cults, one of the things that they, they just can't stand more than anything else is the fact that she would dare to leave them, okay? This isn't a situation where they thank you and they say, oh, well, I appreciate your service here and everything that you've done for our ministry. What a blessing you've been, you know, praying for you that God will bless you in your next season. No, no, that's not what cults do. What they do is they try to make you feel guilty for daring to leave them and make your life absolutely miserable in the aftermath of you actually, you know, going out from underneath them. Now, when this worship leader told IHOP KC leaders that her time had come, it was time for her to go, all of a sudden there was a prophecy. See, this is what they do because they use prophecy as a manipulation tool. They've weaponized prophecy now against pretty much everybody, right? Especially if you're going to, if you want to leave them. And so she talks about how another IHOP KC leader and somebody who also served on the worship team with her and was also involved uh, in prayer leadership had approached her with this prophecy. And upon telling them that she was going to be leaving, this leader told her that God just told me this. God told me that if you leave, if you depart IHOP KC, you are going to fall into a, a lifestyle and a pattern of deep sin. 
And she says, this was interesting to me because it's not as if I wasn't a Christian already for many years prior to coming to IHOP KC. I had already been serving the Lord prior to my start here. This wasn't a situation where, you know, she started attending and became a believer, you know, during her time there, her six years that she spent. No, she was already a believer before that. So she said, I felt it funny that this leader who, who, by the way, she said, I didn't have any real interaction with, I, I knew who they were and everything, but you know, we never really had any meaningful conversations, you know, a couple things here and there, just exchanging a few words, but nothing meaningful. But all of a sudden now I would be, you know, falling into deep sin if I were to leave IHOP KC. And she said, I just didn't buy that for one second. She recognized it as a manipulative tool that they were using to try and keep her there because they didn't want her to leave. And look, and it didn't even matter that she wasn't necessarily a focal point of the worship team or, you know, any other aspect. And she even said, I wasn't, you know, somebody who was, a, a, you know, a, a major you know, person there that they looked to that, you know, I wasn't put up on any pedestal, but just telling them that I was leaving was enough to all of a sudden, after six years, now I became a focal point for them because somebody was actually talking about leaving the cult. And when again, you threaten to leave the cult, well, they react, they spring into action, prophetic manipulation. You're going to fall into sin. And that's supposed to scare these people like, oh no, well, if God told you that I was going to fall into sin, I mean, geez louise, I, I, I better hang on. I better stay here. You know, for, forget, you know, what I feel God is leading me in. I, I'm going to trust you because you're obviously somebody that hears from God more directly than I, I do. So, I mean, I should just stay. So this is, again, yet another example and many that we've talked about of IHOP KC, the cult that they are and the tactics that they use to try and guilt former staff and former students into staying in the cult, which just caused further and further damage. The longer you're there, the longer you are a part of it, the harder it is to come out. And for so many that have shared their stories now, they are detailed, you know, specifically the amount of years it's taken for some of them to come out of this, to truly heal from what has taken place, no matter what was said to them. And, and there are just so much, there's so many out there. And again, it is why I call, and for so many others out there as well that have been doing it, calling for the immediate shutdown of IHOP KC, the cult that they are, and all other ministries associated with them, including their schools. They all have to go because the message from the top with Mike Bickle has been clear since the very beginning, okay? This was his doing, right? He started all of this. He directed his leaders to operate and behave the way that they that they are. He taught them, gave them the blueprint on how to be false prophets and you know and, and everything and, and to manipulate and use these cult-like practices against these people. It's truly sad. This place needs to shut down to allow for true healing to begin. I welcome your thoughts on this in the comment section. Also, I will have a link in the description if you would like to hear this particular worship leader's story about what she went through, along with many others, that will be there for you as well. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. Of course, I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines, keep you up to speed on everything else going on. I do it because yes, we're in the last days and quite frankly, the final hours. Jesus Christ is coming soon. For anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again. 
a child of God, you will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash notbysightnews link in the description or just hit the super thanks button on the YT video here where you can tip me with a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.